So All now right. we all can talk. <clears throat> awesome. Thank you, Dr. Paris. Yes, Eric Vickery of All Star Dental Academy, and Shelly is uh, with All Star as well as a coach, and Larissa also a coach with All Star. So last meeting, we talked about insurance freedom, how that looks. So for, I see David and Christopher and Sandra, are you guys, t Dr. Young, tell me where you are with insurance. How, what's your, you have, you're just in with Delta, you're in with a lot of them, you're out of network with everything. Just give me a perspective on where you are. Uh, we're in network with a lot of them, most of them, I would say. Okay. All right. And uh, David? David works uh, with us as a, a rep for uh, one of the implant companies oh. we work together. So he's just here to listen, to to learn. That's why we share the CISO with the uh, other office. So that's why I made, uh, got it. Usually I always invite him to come over. So Perfect, perfect. <clears throat> okay. Dr. Sandra Wasif, she's uh, also a general dentist. Uh, yes. That we work together. So yes, I'm in network here. with most of them still. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna just show you guys something that we recently stumbled upon and I'm not gonna use any insurance company names because this will end up on YouTube somewhere and I don't wanna get, you know, I wanna end up in a river somewhere. So <laughs> I, I wanna show you guys something real quick just, just to kind of come full circle on the insurance freedom. <laughs> All right, I will share this. This is a an in-network versus out-of-network fee schedule from an insurance company, okay? So check this out. And this is, for a, uh, this is for a New York zip code. So it's a different cost, but the percentages are what makes the same. So when they're in, here's what, here's what this insurance company said. Hey, when you bill us in-network for a periodic exam, your fee is $29. That's what we're gonna pay you, you write off everything else. Once you go out-of-network though, you could charge us $98 to $121 and we'll pay that, okay? Does that make sense so far? So the, the question, you know, when you look at these fees, I'll, I'll go down to a profi here just for kicks. Uh, okay, so profi, when you're in network, we're gonna pay you $60. If, that, if you're in network and that fee looks familiar, okay. And when you go out of network, we're gonna pay you $158 to $173 for a profi. And for a crown, where is it? Shelly and Larissa, the insurance experts will have to, right here, 2740. So in network, we're gonna pay you 769 or half of that. The patient's gonna pay the other half. Or if you're out of network, we'll approve a $1,700 crown. Okay, now the reason I, I show that to you is these insurance companies don't want you to know the dirty secret is that when you're out of network, 90 to 95% of the time, these groups are built to pay out of network benefits at MAC or UCR. So remember this, you're taking a discount, let's say a 40%, okay, 42% is the average, just to be in network so that why? So that I don't have to handle that question, do you take my insurance? Yes, we take your insurance and they pay all of it when you're here. So there's a, there's a nice solution to that for you guys so that you're not working three months a year for free. That 40% write off rate or more actually, four months a year free. So, there's just a good solution there that we want you to know that is for, for I know we're recording this doctor. So anybody that watches it can see it and say, you're telling me an insurance company pays more when I'm out of network. Yes. That's what I'm telling you. Larissa, yes, Shelly. Yes. Doctor. Yes. Okay. Yes, it does. I mean, so, out, I'm out of network anyways. Yeah. So I, I do charge a, a consultation fee for new patients at 215 includes everything, or exam, cancer, x-rays, CT scan, whatever it is. My patient to get a check from, in, uh, for uh, uh, insurance companies about 150 up to 190. So they do get a check. So I'm doing, so I'm, I'm working. They're right in the ballpark. My, yep, they, they are. And the uh, prof, same situation. I mean, I charge my prof and the, my patients are paying me ahead of time. And they get a check, a big check from the insurance company, 120 bucks. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. So why would we take $60 for a profi when they're going to pay us 120? Why would we leave $60 on the table every single time? That becomes a question that needs to be discussed with someone and figure that out for you, okay? We have great coaches, great solutions to how to help you navigate that piece by piece. So you're not taking on a bunch of risk. So I don't know, Dr. Paris, is that enough follow-up from last time? Is that good enough for now? Yeah, that's good okay. enough. I just wanted to make sure we, we always talk about that and support you guys any way we can. Okay, 
All right, insurance freedom, we're here for you. All right, case acceptance. <laughs> you know, doctor, you and I talked about how do we overcome a $40,000 case that we present? How do we overcome an objection of I don't have enough money for that, right? So David with implants, I'm sure you hear this a lot, all on fours or whatever it is, implant cases. We'll get the coaches to jump in here and, and give some uh, pointers as well. Here's the deal. We'll, I'll talk to you about how to handle objections, but know this, you want to spend and invest your time on preventing objections, not handling objections. It's so much easier to prevent objections than it is to deal with them. We have doctors ask us all the time, hey, how do you deal with objections? We have, we have two levels of implementation of that. We have feel, felt, found, a system that we teach on our all-star dashboard, and then we have listen, cushion, and question. It's an advanced coaching skill. Mm -hmm. Uh, verbal skill. So we teach you how to handle those conversations. However, at the end, if you're just presenting $40,000 on a piece of paper and they go, I can't afford that. And you try to use a verbal skill to solve it. It's not going to work. You have to front load your verbal skills and your relationship and your human skills to prevent the objection way before the objection ever shows up. And then the ones objections that you get are severely reduced. Okay. So David, would you say, raise your hand, yes or no, thumbs up, thumbs down. David, would you say that you're in sales? Okay, all right. Uh, Dr. Young, would you say that you're in sales? Yeah. Everybody's in sales, right? Shelly, you're in sales. Dr. Paris, you're in sales. It's how do we go about sales so that we don't get the objections? So in sales, we have to understand two key factors. People don't buy a solution to a problem they don't perceive to have, and people buy for their reasons, not your reasons. And so the systems that we set up beforehand <laughs> is helping, we wanna help patients co-diagnose with us so that they have buy-in to the problem. And they also know potential problems coming if they don't do anything. And also we wanna know why it's important for them to wanna to do it. Peace of mind, job security, job promotions, grandpa lost their teeth, whatever it is. There's a reason why they're in your office. And if we don't know it, we're at a disadvantage. So anytime you get into large case presentation, it is not about the teeth. It is about the human being first, and then it's about the condition of the teeth second. Then we'll put a dollar amount around that. They're not paying $40,000 for, you know, 20 crowns. They're paying $40,000 for the peace of mind knowing they're not, not going to lose all their teeth. And there's a difference in that. So if, if Shelly were my patient, let's just say I'm doing all the things I'm supposed to do that we teach, okay? And I get to case presentation formula. Shelly, you can unmute and be my patient, okay? We're gonna make two assumptions. At $40,000, she has an idea that there's some challenges already, right? Sherry knows there are issues. Even $20,000, she came to us and said, yeah, I know I have some, some concerns, I have some problems I want to get them taken care of. Now, in her mind, she was probably thinking $5,000. <laughs> it's never, it's never what, what they think. So, and the second thing, when we went through the diagnosis, she was a part of that. She saw the photos, she saw the exam, she saw the co-diagnosis. All those things were a part of the process. She was included in on that. And before we even did that, I had a conversation with her to find out what was important to her and why. She wanted a nice looking smile and... I don't know, Shelly, what, what would be your why? What would you just make something up? My grandma had dentures and I surely don't want my okay. teeth in, in a dish. She doesn't, want to, she doesn't want to have teeth in a dish like grandma did. So that's important for me to know. So everything I connect on my treatment plan is connected to grandma's teeth in a dish. It's her why. While she's hearing the diagnosis, while this is leading towards grandma's teeth in a dish, she will be more motivated to want to figure out a solution. Decreasing objections. Okay, we'll still talk about how to handle objections here at phase two. But if I do case presentation formula and we have a PowerPoint and slide and I can show you all that, but I'll just verbally do this with Shelly. So I'm gonna start with what's important to her and I'm gonna get into the conditions we saw that we've already reviewed. All this is review for her. So I say, Shelly, earlier you said it was really important for you just to have peace of mind knowing that you weren't gonna end up like your grandmother did with the dentures and, and that whole experience, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Keeping that in mind throughout our exam, as we looked at things, you know, already having uh, several missing teeth, 
and being concerned about the teeth on either end of those shifting into that spot. We talked about the books on a bookshelf shifting in and then the domino effect of losing more teeth becomes the challenge. And that's probably how grandma got here to that place would be my guess is, you know, you lose one tooth. It's just the progression of another one and another one. And so I'm concerned about the missing teeth that you already have and causing future teeth uh, to be lost, uh, to cause you to lose those teeth, whether it's breaking or erupting out, like we talked about before. So my question for you is how concerned are you with, with replacing those missing teeth to not only function better, but to prevent future tooth loss? Well, initially I was thinking, you know, from the function, because I like to eat Mm. and I can't eat very well, but now that you're saying I could potentially lose more teeth, that's even more concerning to me. So what do I do? Okay. And I'm just going to push a time out here because if you notice, I didn't ask her a yes or no question, right? I just, how, how concerned are you with this? I didn't get a one word answer. I got some conversation from her. And if I didn't get the right answer I was looking for in that we call it testing the buy-in, I would never even present the dentistry. So I'm not going to even get to an objection state. She's never even going to hear $40,000. She's like, yeah, I'm not worried about my teeth being missing. Hi, Jen. Hi. We're just talking about your specialty $40,000 cases. So I'm so glad you're here. (laughs) I'm here. Sorry, I'm late. I got caught up with another team. So Uh, I I understand. (laughs) So we're in the middle of case presentation formula and Shelly's my patient and her why is grandma lost her teeth and they were in a dish. So just to get you up to speed. Got it. So So if I test the buy-in right there and I ask, how concerned are you? And she goes, yeah, I I didn't realize it. And this and this and this, what do I do to fix it? Then I talk about the plan. Now I'm into actually talking about implants, crown and bridge, surgeries, whatever it is. And I could present that. I'm not going to get too excited about that. I'm not going to spend too much time there. We actually say it's only about 5% of the conversation is treatment. And at the end of presenting all that, and I'll I'll spend some time on how we do that and maybe Jen and the coaches can jump in, but I will ask another question. I'll say, Shelly, in hearing the plan on how we can help you save your teeth, how do you feel about moving forward with that type of plan? It's interesting. I wasn't expecting to come in and hear that. I thought we were just going to maybe fill in a couple of spots for purposes of eating. So it's in, I wasn't expecting you to talk about all of the areas, but I, I understand. I, I understand. Do you feel like this is the right direction for you to go? Or do you feel like you need more information? No, it, it makes sense. I'm, I'm disappointed. It's a I'm lot to take in sometimes. That, right? Yeah. 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 I, and, and, and I'm wondering like cost. That's, obviously, I was just going to say, and usually the next thing that a patient will ask me is how much of investment is that? that. And, and I will actually, as the presenter, the doctor, the treatment coordinator, whatever it is, if they haven't asked me about cost, I want to get that on the table. Cause mm-hmm. the patient who doesn't ask how much it is, is not interested. Bottom line. So I got to get in that sales mode. Right. And I got to sell in a way that's not pressure. I got to sell in a, in a comfort way. And I say, I say, you know what? I've got Larissa up front. And she is an absolute magician at going over cost and figuring out how to fit this into your, into your budget, if I'm the doctor. And so let's assume, Shelly, that Larissa can work her magic again and figure out how to get this, this plan into a, a budget for you, make it affordable, bite-sized piece, whatever that is for you. Do you feel like this is the right plan for you to move forward with? I do, okay. because I definitely don't want those dentures. Okay. This is a huge question to ask because now I've removed every potential objection except for one and it will only be money and you'll see when we talk about objections on why that's important so if i can eliminate all of that and just say if this is if you think this is the right thing if we can get the money part worked out and you think it's the right thing do you think this is the right direction to go yes as long as i can get the money part okay great could still object to money but she's in on the concept of what we're talking about So two key factors, not only am I asking questions, but I'm asking open-ended questions. How? I did get to, do you feel like this is the right plan, right? I needed to whittle it down a little bit more. Okay. Now, when I bring this patient to Larissa, I'm going to set her up for success and say, hey, this this is the plan. There's one more thing. Now, if I'm a nice guy and I'm the dentist, I'm already going to break the bad news to Shelly that it's $40,000. 
I'm not going to make Larissa deliver that message. So at the end of the 5% and talking about the treatment, I would have said, and to get everything you know, taken care of, you know, I said, how do you feel about doing this? Yeah. And, and the cost, yeah, it'll be $40,000 to get everything taken care of. Now the treatment plan should be 38,000, but I said 40 because mm -hmm. between me and Larissa, she's going to save $2,000. That's a good thing. It should not be, I say 40,000, it's 42 when she gets out to Larissa. All right. Yeah. So Shelly, anything you would add that, I know I, I just breezed over case presentation for you, but anything that you would add to that from your perspective? Um, not when it comes to objections, other than just from a standpoint of keeping it simple for yeah. the patient when you're talking about tooth replacement, just not overwhelming them and giving them every option that there possibly could be for tooth replacement, but narrowing it down, you know, so it sounds like you didn't want to head down the road of dentures. So if we're filling these couple of spaces, if I'm understanding you right, you probably would not be interested in a partial either. So we're looking that's for good. a fixed solution. Would that be correct? That's yes, good. I want something that stays in that I don't have to take in and out. Okay. We've narrowed it down to two different directions that we could go. You don't yeah. have a tooth behind it. So really we've narrowed it down to one, <laughs> like yeah. to help them to be able to get there. So you're not overwhelming them with so many options that they leave confused, which yeah. is another, a whole nother objection that, that I love that. Get. I love it. And you hear Shelly's asking questions. Asking questions are key. The other thing is in that 5% that we're talking about treatment, I didn't really get into that. You, that's where you have that conversation about what options you're doing with treatment. Okay. Larissa, something that you heard, didn't hear on my end that you want to add to it, something you would make a suggestion about here? No, because you're muted. Okay. <laughs> come, we'll come back to you. Okay. All right, Jen, oh, Jen. what about you? Jen, <laughs> anything you would add, subtract, change? Um, no, I thought everything was great. Sometimes with bigger case acceptance, like larger case acceptance, sometimes organically that conversation of the money comes out sooner before mm. you get the yeses. Um, so what has worked for me in the past and, and what I say is, you know, we'll, we'll get there. We'll talk about that, but to give you an idea, cause I don't want to disregard their answer is you're probably looking at around $2,000 per tooth for veneer. So by the time I get to the cost or the front desk or whatever, they've already pretty much done the math. We talk about the smile that they want and they've calculated, you know, full mouth, 10 teeth, five teeth, whatever it is they're looking for. So, yeah. so you can do the 2000 times 10 is 20 grand. They're figuring it out, but you're starting with a smaller number. Yeah. I'm not saying 10 grand or yeah. 50 grand. It's, yeah. oh, it's about 2000 like per that. tooth, but let's talk about that later. I okay. want to keep talking about your smile. Let's keep, mm -hmm. you know, and you keep them engaged on the emotional and what, what they're looking for. The why, yes, yeah, the what why. they want yeah. and why. Okay, good. So let's assume that everything's going the way we want and now they have an objection, okay? Now they've got an objection, how do we do this? So we're gonna use the formula, listen and cushion and then question, 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 question. Question to the ninth degree. Questions are our friend. The listen and cushion is just to tell the patient I'm on your team. So Shelly, I'll, I'll be the person, I say $40,000 and you say, I can't afford that. And you're going to hear how I break this down. Okay. So Shelly, it'll be, you know, $2,000 a tooth, right? We're going to do 10 up or 10 lower. We're going to get everything taken care of with the implants. Everything's done. $40,000 will be the total. How do you, how do you, how does that sound to you? Um, yeah, that's a little steep. That's, that's way more than what I was expecting to hear when I came in today. I don't know, Eric. I don't know if I can do that. I love when you get in actress mode. <laughs> you were so not a, uh, yeah. <laughs> you were like, boom, boom, boom. But this is good. All right. We're, the, the Oscar's going to go to Shelly. So, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to listen and cushion and say, you know, Shelly, I get it. I, I totally hear where you're coming from. You know, thinking about health and taking care of yourself and investing in that, that's a, that's something that everyone's got to process and figure out. Let me ask you this. So I did listen and cushion. I said, I get it. I didn't agree with her. I said, I get it. I hear where you're coming from. And then I said, let me ask you this. That is your cue to remember, hey, I got questions. And I love either or questions. So I say, let me ask you this, Shelly. Is it that you're focusing on the total cost to afford it? Or is it you're trying to figure out how do I fit the $40,000 into a monthly payment plan? Probably more the monthly payment plan because I've got four kids. Mm. They're in college and I just... I just don't know if, if, if now is the right time. So sure. I, that just, you know, 
That's Fair. just in the back of my mind, not expecting to hear it. So completely reasonable, completely reasonable. What, what always remember in our practice, you are the one in the driver's seat. You're telling us at what pace we're moving forward. Okay. You just, you just keep just giving us feedback. So okay. let's go up front, see Larissa. She's going to figure out what that monthly payment could look like for you. We'll get it as low as possible for you. And then you can go from there. Just like when you go to buy a car that you really want, something you really love, you're not paying for the whole price of the vehicle at once. You're figuring out how do you make it affordable and, and an option. And we do the same thing here. And uh, she's a magician. She'll, she'll get it figured out for you. How does that sound? I, I would like to see what that looks like. Okay. Yeah. Because and I have a temporary important. solution, right? If she says yes, I've got a temporary solution. And then Larissa will be able to either finish it or not finish it. Right. Either she's in or she's out. Okay. So there's no pressure here. Pressure doesn't work. Oh, Shelly, don't worry about it. Uh, it's just money. The kids can drop out. Yeah, drop out. we could, we'll come up with payments. You know, we'll be the bank for you. Don't worry. <laughs> right. You're either historically what we've realized is fight or flight. You either are an argument, right? Fight or you're an agreement flight. And what we're saying is neither of those are the right option. Agreeable. Yeah. Okay. No worries. Let us know when you're ready. No, no pressure. I didn't do that. And I didn't also say, well, we got payment plans. Just, you don't even know yet, Shelly. Just let's look at the payment plans for you. I didn't do either of that. I kind of put those two things together, agreement, and argument, and put it together. I did acknowledge and engage. I hear you. I get where you're coming from. And in fact, it's, it's one of those things that we have to be focused on how to make healthcare affordable these days. Totally get it. Let me ask you this engage then come up with some questions that you can ask so the the listen cushion question 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 uh, system is very easy to use it's non-pressure focused and it's also built around the patient presenting a solution or at least the feeling that they're presenting a solution than us telling them what to do for example if i had given those two choices and neither of those were the correct choices shelly would have given me the third option she would have said, oh, no, it's neither of those. In fact, it's I'm getting a, my grandmother passed away, but I don't get my inheritance for another two months. It's a timing thing. Okay. Make sense? So, Jen, when you get to the end and you've been $2,000 a tooth, you get to $20,000 and they say, man, I'm just, I just don't know about the $20,000. How do you go about doing that? Same way. Is it that – so – you don't know about the $20,000. Is it a timing thing? Is it putting factoring this into your budget? A lot of the times I hear, I had to go home and talk to my wife or my husband and I dig. Okay. So are you going to go home and talk to your wife about in your husband about like what's going on and what you want for your smile? Or are you going to go home and talk to them to see how this is going to fit into your family's budget? Yeah. So either or question. Either or, yep. So there's always an action, an excuse that patients make, but what is truly their intention? So really what I'm digging for is what is their intention? Their intention is not to go ask the husband for money. That's right. Or that's the intention, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I tell my wife all the time, look, if you don't want to do something, you don't be the bad guy. Just make me the bad guy. Just tell him your husband said you can't afford it. <laughs> your husband said, no, your husband said, no, we can't do it or whatever. I don't think she ever does that though. I like to point out that a lot of times people use money as their buffer and it yeah. may not truly be the true underlying reason that they're not moving forward. They just mm -hmm. haven't, they have a trust issue. They have a fear issue. They let's have do the categories. So let's do the categories. So money. So there's five, right? Money is one. That's usually the big one that people think it is. Okay. Then you, you gave us, what's the other one, Shelly? Urgency. Okay. So lack it's, of urgency. Hurt. Doesn't hurt. Don't touch me. Okay. It's not bothering trust. me now. Yeah. Lack yep. of trust. Okay. Fear. Uh, I'm afraid of the dentist. Okay. And time. I don't have the time mm -hmm. to do it. Now, my personal belief. Oh, and confusion is six. Yes. I, I don't really understand yeah. it. Yeah. Lack of information. Which yeah. falls into the category of trust. Yeah. 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 Trust or exactly. urgency. Yep. Yeah. It could, yeah. it could, mm -hmm. it could fall into those. So here, here's my personal belief. This is just my own theory. You know, somebody says I can't afford it. And, and you just remembered that five minutes ago, they were talking about their vacation to the, the Bahamas. And, and then you watch them get in their car and drive off in their Cadillac, right? And so I, I often think that money is the smokescreen and for what? And typically I would say lack of urgency. So Larissa, um, do you, can you unmute there? Yeah, yeah, let's see. <laughs> it looks like you're on your phone, no? <laughs> 
Ooh, there you are. <laughs> Go for it. Go for it now. Yeah, we can hear you. Anything that you want to add to that about objections? Now, I was actually going to bring, you know, you know, the reasons of the categories, because it's very important to understand that money may be what they say, but urgency and trust, they don't verbalize that. Yeah. They don't tell you, I lack urgency on this, or I lack uh, trust on you to get this done. So we got to ask the right questions, 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 questions. That's so right. you, you, you understand their, their, the real reason why they don't want to. hundred percent agree. Yeah. It's the, the lack of, let's just use lack of urgency. Cause I agree with both lack of urgency sometimes will show up with, well, it's not bothering me. I think I'm going to wait or, or your admin team is getting a phone call. Um, uh, Shelly, Shelly calls me to remind me that I have an appointment with the doctor, with Dr. Young for my crown coming up. Right. And I say, Oh, Shelly, I was, I'm so glad you called. I was just getting ready to call you. You know what? That tooth, yeah. it's not even bothering me, right? I'm going to go ahead and wait. And this lack of urgency shows up in our face at that moment. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's how lack of urgency can show up. What I find is it mostly shows up in is I can't afford it. I, I'm not going to, I don't have the money to do that right now. We have to be able to dig in with questions and figure out where did we lose this patient? And can we re-engage? This is why it's so much easier to prevent objections than it is to deal with them because I'm administrative now talking about a money objection when it's really, I don't believe that the condition that I'm suffering from is going to cause me a future problem, a consequence, toothache or tooth loss. Okay. So can I do it as an administrator? I could give it a shot. So if Shelly says, you know, I can't afford it. I'm going to dig in. Listen, cushion question. I'm saying, you know, Shelly, I get it. Let's say it's lack of urgency, Shelly. Okay. You, you, you don't have any pain. Okay. So, but you told me you can't afford it. So I say, you know, Shelly, I, I totally hear you. And you know, figuring out how to afford healthcare these days is a priority for a lot of people. And that's, that's what I love about my job is helping people, people get healthy and making it affordable while they do that. Let me ask you this. When you think about affording what Dr. Young has, has really talked to you about, is it, you know, investing that much? Is it, do I really need it right now? Is it, how do I afford it uh, on a monthly basis? Maybe a payment plan? Tell me, share with me where you're at. Um, well, I, like I said, I didn't expect all of that to be what you're, what you were saying. And I, I thought it was just the one, one tooth. And then now it's, you know, all these different areas and it's 40,000. And I just, I'm, I'm just surprised that that's what the recommendation was. Got and it. so I'm just a little hesitant there as well. So I'm going to push a time out here because if this is happening, I'm going to go to my clinical team later on today. And what am I going to tell my clinical team? You missed it. You missed it. That patient did not understand the diagnosis. And who am I, this lowly administrator, to tell you what your diagnosis is? Let me look at these x-rays and show you your toes on these pictures right here, right? <laughs> I, I don't, I'm not going to be able to tell you what, what I see. I'm, what am I going to do? I can tell you what the payment plan is, but if you don't believe it, if you don't believe there's something urgent, what's going to motivate you to sign up for $500 a month? It's yeah. a nice car. I've been the treatment coordinator who's been asked, you know, why, why is my proposed and accepted so bad? Why aren't you closing these cases? I'm mm -hmm. like, you tell me, Yeah. you tell me, like, yeah. I yeah. can't close what you haven't found out what the patient, you haven't met the patient where they wanted to be met. And yeah. so I can't continue. I can't close that case. There's nothing I can do. I can help with financial. I can help with time. A lot of times help spread things out, but there's mm. the urgency and the trust yeah, that has to be a full team clinical full team event. Yeah, it, it's important to say it's, it's a team effort. It's not just one person, you know, making sure that, you know, they can handle all the objections. It's a team effort. If everybody does their part, it's just easy at the, you know, at, you know, there, then you have a magician in the front desk because yeah. it was just, you know. it was easy. That's right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Jen, I did a, I did a brief, you know, emotional, 95.5. I didn't really get into it. So take us through a, just a, maybe like four or five bullet points of things that you know, in a large case treatment plan that you, and then I'll have each coach maybe add some things or something, but give us four or five things that you know, as you walk this patient through, I need to know this the patient needs to know that I need to know this patient needs to know that what are some sy systems that we teach that you make sure that you have to have for that large case. Okay. So the number one thing that I need to know is I need to know why I need to know why they want it. That's not an easy conversation to get to. You got to earn the right to dig deep and ask the patient. 
Um, the second, that's Hold number on. one for me. So number okay. one, the why, and what's the verbal skill system that we teach that, what is that called? Do we use, what do you call so it? So we use the emotional exam. Emotional exam. All right, yeah, cool. Emotional exam. So, so we teach an emotional exam where mm -hmm. you actually say to the patient, you know, describe what you're looking for, uh, describe what you're unhappy with. And then we get to a place where they, they describe what they're looking for and what they want. And then we ask them, Jen, what do we say? Why is that so important to you? Why is having that so important to you? And that's where you hear what Shelly shared earlier. My grandmother lost her teeth. They were in the dish or I've got a job promotion coming up. And now people are buying for their reasons, not your reasons. And typically people buy with emotion, justified logic. So I completely mm -hmm. agree. I started that right before you got here. I was like, you got to know the okay. why. So there's yep. got to be a conversation then preclinical, mm -hmm. right? Pre-exam that goes on. So, and you do this um, in your office. I know Shelly, you've done this in your office. Larissa, I know you coach offices on this. This is something that we teach that is so important that you can't just let go of and go, I'm just not gonna do that part. <laughs> I don't wanna have that conversation because that's gonna hold you back on your case acceptance for sure. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's okay. fair. All right, number two. All right, and number two is, so the why, I wanna know what is the, like, um, how do I say this, that they're, how do they value the overall health of their mouth? Like, what is their driving force? So the why is different to the why now mm. the timing. So okay. to me, it's important to know the timing and why, what's driving their why right now at this very present. And how do you do that? How do you find, I mean, cause that sounds like urgency to me, right? You're helping with mm -hmm. urgency and timing and all that, but how do you, how do you do that? Is that in the emotional that, exam? Yeah, it's during the emotional exam. So mm -hmm. as we're talking and they're talking about what they don't like about their teeth, you know, part of my discovery process is um, one question that I go to is how long have you thought about changing your smile? Mm. Like, oh, I just thought about it last week. Okay. So we have some conversation to have right now. <laughs> Expectations. Okay. The expectations. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, okay. Or this is something I've been wanting to do for years and my, my kid is finally graduating from college and it's time for me now. Okay. So, now, Shelly and Jen, you guys would do this in your office. Would your doctor also do this? Or is this something just team driven that's doing this part? For me, it's team driven. Okay. Doctor's not part of it. For me, 95% of it is team driven. Okay. So it doesn't have to be the doctor having pro this conversation. Proper transfer so that the doctor that's is right. brought up to speed. Yeah, we have to have a transfer of care where, where doctor gets information. Okay. So finding the why, using the emotional exam, that's a really important verbal skill. It's a really important system to use. You're having a conversation with this patient to discover not only what they're looking for, for the health of their mouth, but why they're there. They're not there on accident. There's a purpose behind it. Find their why. Why is having that so important to you? That is the, the magic question. Okay, good. What's number three? Um, where was I? Okay. So the urgency, uh, number three for me that I always try to uncover during the exam is who's, the, who is the decision maker? Hmm. How do you, um, how do you figure that out without the decision maker? The wife can be in there all day long saying, yeah. yes, yes, I want this. Um, and then so it, nothing happens. Yeah. And so, um, we have a system that we bring patients in for our consultation first, and it happens on the front end on the phone. You're going to get so much information. You're going to meet with Jen, our new patient coordinator, meet the doctor. I highly recommend if there's anybody in your life that helps you make decisions that they come along with you. So during the great call process, we have a system, another acronym system that we great, use. Yes. Great call process. Uh, in that, once you start to get a feel for what, what Ricky Bobby's looking for, you're going to then suggest that, hey, we're going to be making decisions here with you. Would it be appropriate for you to have a spouse or a co-decision maker come with you to that appointment? question mark. Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Or sometimes even throughout the exam, we'll have them back to okay. do the oh, gotcha. finding okay. of the consult. Um, so I'll discover that at that time. I got you. So after the, so phone calls, just describing the process, but then during the mm -hmm. exam, you can then say, Hey, next visit at the mm -hmm. consult, you'll bring that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah. Love it. All right. What else? All right. So, um, the why the decision, those are really my top three. I'm trying to pull okay. out another one that's important to me, but those, those would right. be my top three. All right. Shelly, what would you add from that on? What would you add to that? I like to ask what might stay in their stand in their way. Okay. And that's before I've ever the doctor looked in their mouth yeah. before yeah. anything happens, because it's much easier to, to address an objection beforehand. Cause if you wait until they give you the objection after you've presented, then mm. you're kind of backpedaling yourself and mm -hmm. like, 
trying to over explain why it's okay. It's okay. I know it's a lot of money, but it's okay. But if they mm -hmm. flat out tell you right up front, cost is going to be a concern for me. I'm going to want to know about that. I get it. We'll make sure you know it. Anything else that would stand in your way of getting you where you want to have your, the health of your mouth. Love it. And so that's helped me a ton is Great. finding that first. Larissa, what, what would you add to this, these steps, something that you're like, okay, I have to have this when I'm talking to a patient that way. I actually, the one thing that uh, when Jen started uh, telling her points, she said, I dig deep. And yeah. that makes me remind myself of always asking for that permission statement. Okay. Yeah. Permission you statement. don't want to get into their business. You don't want them to feel like you're getting to their business. So asking for their permission to ask these questions, yeah. usually for me, it helps because it opens up. That's right. You know, the door for the That's conversation. So good. Yeah. So in our system of the emotional exam, we use a, a phrase called the introduction or permission statement. So I'd say, Shelly, before we ever look in your mouth, whatever, we need to know what's important to you because whatever's important to you becomes what's important to us. And the only for, way for us to be on the same page is for us to ask you some really important questions to find out what exactly you want for the health and appearance of your smile. And so we're going to go through just a few questions. And I want you to share as much information with me as you can, because the more information you share with me, the better job we're going to do at taking care of you the way you prefer. Does that make sense? It does. And that's what Larissa's wow. talking How about. You, you want to use that introduction first before you get in. Okay. All right. So that's all pre-exam. You're really front loading the effort you're putting in. So at the end, you don't have objections down the line. And then for me, that bridge into the clinical exam, getting this patient, let's say it's not cosmetics, let's say it's functional, it's implants, it's things like that. You know, I'm, I'm really focusing on the 95-5 rule. I'm 95% of my conversation and, and effort and energy and time is spent on condition and consequences, so diagnosis, and only 5% down the line is gonna be spent on the treatment plan, right? So, we use over here psychology, we use implication questions, we're focusing on condition being what we marinate in. So if Jen's the assistant, I'm the doctor, Shelly's the patient, I'm talking to Jen and I say, all right, Jen, we're gonna start on the upper right uh, for Shelly and tooth number two has a large old metal filling in it. It's an MODL, it's got a gap between the filling and the tooth, uh, defective margins. And there's decay underneath this old metal filling. I'm concerned about this tooth uh, turning into a toothache. Um, Shelly, has this, has this tooth started to hurt you yet? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I'm you're going to, you're going to get an Oscar. I swear. No. Okay. That's just, just one word <laughs> acting. This is amazing. So, okay. Have you ever had a toothache before Shelly? Yes. Okay. I have. Okay. That and one that's missing down here. That so one you ended hurt. up having, I was just going to ask, you ended up having, cho choosing to have it extracted. Okay. All right. Didn't have a choice. Yeah. All right. And have you ever heard of a root canal before? Oh yeah. I had one of those too. Okay. I had one of those too. Okay. So you've had some experience yep. with this. So the reason I'm so yep. concerned about this tooth, the amount of decay that's going on there is, you know, the, the space between a, a simple cavity and a severe problem is about three millimeters on your tooth. It's not very big. It's like the, the center of an apple. Imagine a really small apple right? And a worm's eating that. It's like, it doesn't have to go very far to get to the center of it. And it's a problem. And it, it just explodes on, uh, on you. And, and that's where extractions and, and, and root canals and all that stuff plays a role. And our goal is for you never have to go through those things. Does that make sense? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, Jen, foundation full coverage. All right. Tooth number three. Okay. So some things that I'm doing there are what we train. We, we, I, there's, I'm not using limiting terms, a bunch of dental jargon that she couldn't understand. I'm, I'm using implication questions that she's involved with in the conversation. Uh, I disguised the treatment plan, foundation full coverage. So she didn't hear crown and just thought about money the whole time we're, we're going through this. I want her marinating in the diagnosis and the consequence of that diagnosis. So that at the end, she's going, wow, I didn't realize it was so bad. What do I got to do to fix it? I'm hoping that she asks for a solution. And now I'm not going to deal with so many objections if I do that. People object because they don't have urgency or value. I'll, I'll say cancel. People cancel their appointment because they don't have urgency or value and they don't respect your time. Well, they don't understand the urgency and value because they don't get it. They're not dentists. They didn't go to dental 101 school. This is you taking them to school through the exam process. I know what's important to them and why. Grandma lost her teeth. And now I'm helping them understand the diagnosis that could also cause 
her to lose her teeth. Let's say the why is just they want to have a confidence. They think their smile's perfect. They love it. They just want to keep it. And, and I just want to have a confident smile. That's their why. Okay. Anything I find is now going to be in effect, you know, an attack on maintaining a confident smile, peace of mind, beautiful wedding photos, job promotions, whatever it is, there's a reason why. Dr. Pires, I'll throw you a curveball here and see if you can hit a home run. So when you guys do this in your practice, what are some whys that you hear from patients? Why are there, why are they wanting to see you for implants, for re- restoring their smile? What, what are you hearing? Well, sometimes I ask uh, how, uh, if they like their own smile, first of all. So some of them, they have already missing teeth and they're saying, you know, doc, I cannot buy an apple. <clears throat> so I say, great. Would mm. you feel more comfortable if you were able to buy an apple? You know, doc, it's been a couple of years. I, I want to fix my teeth. So, okay. Yeah. What do you have? I have a loose partial. <clears throat> it hurts. I can't wear. So I say, okay, that's the why. That's the problem. So I can actually help them to you know, guide the best attrition plan for them. So I said, yeah. you know, how about doing a couple of implants here and get your denture more firm? They said, oh, can you do that? And have a little model on my on my uh, office so I can, they can see the denture actually being put on and put out on the on the implants. Mm-hmm. So, oh, so you can make that thing more stable? So yes. <laughs> oh, okay. But how about putting something permanent? That's when they come up with the question. Say, how about make things more permanent? I said, well, if you do another two, three implants, yeah, we can make it uh, completely permanent. Oh, okay. And that's when they really understand what's going on and you understand where they're coming from. Yeah. Now, the beautiful thing here is if the general dentist is doing this and the specialist is doing this as well, and you're sharing that information. So imagine... Shelly walks into Dr. Paris's office, the periodontist office, and we sit down in the background and I say, Shelly, I know that Dr. Young referred you to our practice and they shared some things with us about what you're, what's going on and what you're looking for. And I just want to make sure we're on the same page and dive into that conversation with you. Here's what I know so far. Tell me more. Here's what I know so far. Tell me more. Here's what I know so far. Tell me more. Now, all of a sudden our credibility rises. Everybody's on the same page. You guys really work well together or vice mm-hmm. versa patient comes to the GP's practice from Dr. Pires, right? The periodontist refers them over and they're going, they're coming to the GP saying, you know, I was talking with Dr. Pires and I really want this. I really want to see this happen. And they're almost asking for the solution. That's a such, such a, it's a, just a team approach to this. That's what we, that's where we want to be. Okay. Mm-hmm. Dr. Pires, mm-hmm. anything else you want to add to just that whole synopsis we did on emotional exam, 95.5 rule case presentation formula? Well, basically, it's a little like that. I spend more of my time talking about the findings and the consequences. So I'm not going for a gum treatment. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you have a gum treatment here. It's moderate. Uh, if you don't treat, you're going to have, a, you know, tooth loss. You're not going to be able to chew. You're not going to be able to, to eat. You're going to have more uh, pain eventually because, unfortunately, the period does not hurt in the beginning. But eventually, yeah. it's going to start hurting Friday night before holidays. You know, so and yeah. then more work for you, more work for me. <laughs> yeah, more expense. Yeah, more all expense. of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, Dr. Young, uh, Dr. Sandra, you know, this is a study club. We've got about 15 minutes. When do you have specific cases that you're thinking of or thoughts on, hey, how do I present this or how do I approach this patient scenarios that we can help you with? Without using patient names, of course. Can I add something, Eric? Yeah, please do, Larissa. Jump in. What Dr. Pierce just did, he played it forward, right? Yes. <laughs> it's called playing he it forward, yes. The, yeah, he brought the patient you know, into the future and say, hey, do, do you want this to happen to you? This is what's so going to happen if you don't do anything. Exactly. Yep. It's good. Good, good idea on that. Yeah. That's a system of playing it forward when there's lack of urgency. It's not bothering me right now. Why do I do it now? Yeah. Yeah. That's period disease. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like to say, have you ever seen anyone with long teeth and black spaces in between their teeth? Cause everybody's seen that. It's okay. That's advanced. We're catching this now. Here's what, here's, do you want to prevent that? Ask a question. That's playing it forward too, Larissa. Good. All right. So does anybody have any scenarios that they want support with uh, ideas, questions, Things we covered that you want clarif- clarif- uh, clarification on. We're taking about 
what, six months of training, Shelly, and putting it into 45 minutes? <laughs> Easily six months. Yeah. Um, the other component that when Dr. Perez just said that about, um, you know, having, it's not bothering me so they don't have the urgency is I like to kind of lead them just like what Larissa was saying, lead them down that road of, I'm glad it's not bothering you yet. Mm. Eric, you mentioned the word yet mm -hmm. um, when you were interviewing me, but that word in itself opens the door to conversation. And then any condition, I like to end it with ING. So it's not done. It's not cracked. It's cracking because it's only going to continue to get worse. Decaying. Uh, decaying. <laughs> yep. Receding. So just kind of leading them down that road that it's an active problem. It's not complete at this point. Um, and then when you said it doesn't hurt, kind of thinking through periodontal disease doesn't hurt in those stages. Neither does high blood pressure until it's too late. Neither yeah. does high cholesterol until it's too late. Yeah. And so we're fortunately identifying this before it's become a chronic problem and it's causing you pain and issues. Love it. So let's make sure that we can maintain that where you're at and get things back to healthy before this becomes a severe problem for you. Yep. Love so it. Those Thank two, you. Diabetes, like when, yeah. any of those, they don't hurt until okay. it's too late. Oh, yeah. so. That's good. Something happened yesterday. I have a patient, a new patient. The patient came in for a consultation and uh, the patient... Well, the patient needs uh, requires a crown lengthening. So the patient told me, Do you really do I need really need the crown lengthening? Because my doctor he told me that I need a crown lengthening for a crown. Lack of urgency. I hear, yeah, I want to hear another option. So yeah, don't you worry, I gotta give another option. So I did my exam and say, you know, I agree with your doctor. If it's right, you you really that tooth needs a crown lengthening. Why? Because there's a decay over there, it's below the gum line. You want to make sure you can clean the tooth and the margin of the crown. And uh, that tooth is good. I mean, uh, you already spend time and money with a root canal treatment. You have the temporary crown already. Your gums are good. Let's go ahead and fix the tooth. And then I said, and they are going back because uh, the patient asked me right in the beginning what it was the other option. I said, no worries. So I did all my exam, everything else. So at the end, I brought the question back. I said, you asked me about another question, correct? Another option, correct? Oh, yes. What would be? Well, if you would like to, I can take the tooth out yeah. and do a bone grafting implant. Yeah, that can be done because it's a tooth number 31. You don't have a number 30. Actually, it's a lower right for small, I think. So number 30, I say, you know, you don't have a tooth behind it. So it's going to be missing the number 30. You don't have the other molar. And then what's going to happen? It's going to be treating the other side. It's going to crack the other tooth. So mm. there's two options. Consequences. Uh, you can yeah. crawl lengthening or the second option, take the tooth out and do implant. So which one do you prefer? Choose. Choose. Yeah. Oh, Implant, you know, doctor, I read spend them time of money with my root canal, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the crown, temporary crown. How much the implant? Well, the implant runs about you know four to five thousand. We're not talking about you know bone graft and things like mm. that. I think I'm gonna go for the crown. <laughs> yeah, take the best, op better option now. Now it doesn't sound so bad. That's so good. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So, Jen, Larissa, Shelley, feel free. Any of you can jump in on this, but uh, I'll just start with Jen. I want to talk about KPIs for case acceptance. And so when you think about tracking case acceptance, for some reason we talk, talk oh yeah, I, I get my, my case acceptance is good. You know, I get this kind of vague response. When you think about case acceptance numbers, what do you think is, is one, two, three really important KPIs for us to be aware of when it comes to case acceptance tracking? Um, the case acceptance tracking, number one important thing I would say is the definitely production per hour, because that's telling you how fast, how much case acceptance you're getting, but also mm. patients are getting healthy faster Okay, and there's more trust there. So production so, per hour by so doctor or patient, production per hour per but, patient, either one, they kind of both yes. are, okay, got it. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. All right, good. Mm -hmm. All right. And also the amount that you're presenting. So, you know, yes. I have heard that some teams are like, oh, our case acceptance is at a hundred percent. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> so show me what you're presenting. I love like that $5,000. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. oh, okay. Then, yeah. um, yeah, what? we so, get everybody to say yes. Well, who's everybody? Oh, two people. We presented two crowns. You know, I'm, I'm being facetious here. I totally yeah. agree. Yeah. Dollar amount presented. Okay, yeah. good. Larissa, what would you add to that? I mean, uh, the basic, how many patients you presented to and how many people accept the treatment, that's not a real metric, but, you know, it takes you somewhere, it, especially when you ask a doctor, how's your 
case the acceptance they'll be like good then let's count you know what what does that mean exactly yeah and the next thing is when you're when you're tracking your case acceptance and you're looking at your money like uh jen just said you presented ninety five thousand and twenty five thousand was accepted What's that seventy thousand for? Uh, what I usually see these are the bigger procedures like Invisalign or even you know uh, whitenings or post 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 court crowns for teeth with existing broken out that are not bothering. So it, it, you will see that it would be um, sorry. I think I went uh, off a little bit, but you will you know that those numbers will tell you exactly what you need to work on within you know the practice. You can zero in on it. Yeah. So in our, our case presentation tracker, exactly what you guys are talking about, we track every single patient name, dollar amount presented, date scheduled or not scheduled, dollar amount scheduled, and then follow up column. And then we get a percentage of how many people said yes. We want 80% of the people scheduling something. And then out of those numbers, what was the dollar amount? We want 60% of the dollars being scheduled. That is our minimum. If we're not above that, then forget about it. And then on top of it, it's what's the dollar amount per case we presented. If you're presenting $1,000 per person, probably playing it too safe. Maybe the treatment plan is too phased out, that sort of thing. Shelly, what about you? What would you add to that? Um, they've nailed it. I would, I would also watch your cancellations because it's mm. one thing to schedule it, but you it's want good. them to keep it. Yeah. We um, could do a whole meeting just on, on preventing cancellations and how to handle cancellations, right? Yeah. Mm. So good. What else, Shelly? Anything else you were going to say there? They cover, I mean, those are my big yeah. ones that I like to look at. I mean, yeah. and really the cancellations kind of, you'd notice that when you're production per hour, because you're not going to produce it if they canceled, but it's still a good thing to keep a pulse on um, because you have this false sense of confidence Yeah. of I've, I've scheduled everybody. I've scheduled everybody. If you're scheduled. only looking at the proposed accepted tracker yes. and then it's like, yeah, but these last 30, they all canceled. So we didn't actually see those. So. Now we got to look back at what Jen was saying is production per patient and production per hour. Cause are they, are, yeah, are they both? Okay. I, I will wrap up with this, Dr. Paris, uh, for the doctors that end up watching this, Dr. Young, Dr. Sandra, for those that are in network, we, we will get you a, 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 a pre-recorded video of how to fill out two trackers. They're called PPO uh, uh, population tracker what plans and how many patients do you have in it? And a second tracker is um, how much are you writing off for each one of those plans? And we'll, in the video, show you how to fill that out. We'll give you that for free. So you can see what is insurance costing you? Is it a big deal or not? You can email it to me and I'd be happy to let you know, hey, you're doing great. These are, these are healthy plans or, hey, here's the concern we have for this. There's that 95, the, the diagnosis part has to be done. So these trackers will help you diagnose. We're, we're happy to get you to those there's normally for our existing clients but for dr paris will anybody that's watching that wants us just email me eric at allstardentalacademy.com it's all of our first names chat. yeah just okay chat so that way okay I, great actually eric, i think if you type in the chat it will be recorded anyways oh okay great yeah so yeah. So email any of us. We're happy to support you guys any way we can because Dr. Paris is a client of ours. And by supporting you, we're supporting him. So we're here for you guys. So anything else to wrap up with, Dr. Paris? No, I think that'd be great. All right. Thank you. Any awesome. further questions or anything like that? So yeah. Any comments by anybody? Good awesome. things, bad things. Doesn't matter. Just <laughs> leave a like. Yeah. Don't leave yeah. a like. Doesn't yeah. Matter. <laughs> Give us some feedback. Give Dr. Paris some feedback on what you want us to talk about next time. We'll do this again in uh, June, I think. Yeah, I think that'll be in June. Uh, okay, we'll, from, uh, we'll be back in June. Sandra gives it the thumb up. Thank you very much. We're here to help you guys any way we can. Okay. All right. Awesome. Take care, right. guys. Have a good night, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.